my name is Steph. Thank you very much for tuning in today. I really do appreciate it. We have got a jammed packed show for you today. You are not going to want to touch that dial. Let me tell you, you're just not going to want to touch that dial. So just sit back, relax, and um, I always just wanted to say that. <laughs> I mean, we do have a jam packed show for you. You know, I'm not telling a story, but yeah, I just want to say that. So, hey, in the comments, let me know if I nailed it. Let me know if y'all went, what in the world is she doing? Because, you know, y'all know, y'all know me. Y'all know me by now, except for the couple of subscribers. Hello. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it, and Remington appreciates it. Okay, today I was going to make a planner video, how I do my planner and um, how we were going to start out our first week of school. And I saw some other moms put out their planners. <laughs> and no way am I doing a planner video. Those moms know what they're doing. Y'all need to go there <laughs> and look and see what they're doing because, yeah, I mean, I'm going to show you my planner, and then you're going to go, yeah, that, that's about right for Steph. And, um, yeah, that, that's, that's, about, that's about it. You are going to get a bigger reaction out of, I really do have some important news to tell you. Um, I am on Instagram now, right? I know, I can't believe it either. But when I was recovering from surgery, I actually um, looked into technology, right? I do have a video that was out last week. I'm going to put it right up there for you. We did reveal Remington science curriculum, but I did talk about the advanced technology that's coming out. My goodness gracious. Even if you just fast forward to that, um, that'd be, you know, that is kind of really worth a watch. But I am on Instagram, so I'm going to put my little link down there. We do really kind of have a jam-packed show for you today. Uh, we're going to go over my planner. We're going to go over our first week of school, which is next week. We're going to go, go over a little bit of our curriculum. I'm going to answer some questions about five in a row. And I'm going to answer some questions about how to help your littles stay tuned to your chapter books. So there we go. If you are in that, if you want to hear more, if you have listened this long, <laughs> you might as well see what's on the other side of this YouTube segment. All right, hello, and thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it very, very much. And um, I'm going to say this right out, right out of the gate. If you enjoy any of this video, YouTube shows our videos if we can prove that we're worth watching, and that's really how it goes. Um, so if you like any part of this video, if you wouldn't mind giving us a thumbs up, we would really, really appreciate it. You know, and if you don't like it, a thumbs down will do. You know, as a content creator, we do have the option to take those uh, away but I chose to keep them on just so that I know, you know, I can kind of gauge my performance. <laughs> it's just me being myself. Maybe I need to act a little bit, uh, you know, I don't know. Anyway, we would love for you to go on this journey with us. If you would like to subscribe, we'd love to have you. If you're really not sure and you're like, what in the heck am I even watching? Then take your time. Maybe watch a couple of more of my videos before you subscribe. And, uh, yeah, so there we go. There's and, that. Uh, Remington says hello. He was going to come in here and join me today. I asked him if he would because we are going to go over a little bit of his curriculum. And um, he's busy with Pop Pop. And when he's busy with Pop Pop, <laughs> I get to take a break, right? And um, All right, so let's start off with the questions that I was asked over on Instagram. The first question that I had over there was how to get littles to sit through chapter books. Okay, it depends. Now, if you are reading a chapter book to your older your older child and, and your little child, maybe, um, and this pertains to Sunlight. We're doing the Sunlight HBL. Um, but really, I mean, it can pertain to any chapter book. If you're reading, you know, a chapter book to your child and, um, you know, you're maybe trying to get the little one to pay attention uh, and the little one's not paying attention, it's because the little one's not ready to pay attention. The reason that we are reading chapter books to our children, very simple. We are teaching our children to hear correctly spoken 
English. We are teaching, teaching our, children. our children to speak correctly spoken English. And we are teaching our children to um, sit still and be quiet and um, have their attention, you know, held for at least 10 minutes, you know, when they're little. Uh, I'm not talking like sitting still in a chair, okay? I'm talking, you know, give them something to color, give them uh, slime, you know, give them some uh, sand, kinetic sand, whatever you're comfortable giving them to uh, play with, even if it's a picture book, you know, while, while they're listening. Um, that's kind of what you're training your littles to do. Now, if you're talking, and, and that pertains to, for me, that pertained to my uh, kindergartner as well when we were reading chapter books. There were books that he would sit there and he was really interested in. And the books that he wasn't interested in, I'm kind of, well, this shouldn't be a surprise to y'all. I'm kind of a rule breaker when it comes to um, interest that little. I think when they're that little, you know, five, six, seven, when they're that little and they're not really showing an interest, you can try an audiobook and see if that holds their interest right. Um, and if that's not really holding their interest, then just try another book. Just try another book. And don't stress out over it. You know, just don't stress out over it. Um, if you're stressed out reading the book, your kids are going to pick up. Kids can pick up on your emotions. They're little. They can pick up on how mama feels, how grandmama feels, how their caregiver feels, how daddy feels. Okay, they can pick up on how you feel. So if you're stressed because, um, you know, the little one isn't sitting and listening for the entire chapter or you know your your little boy wants to fidget and and mess around with things and you start stressing out well they're gonna they're gonna want you to stop the book so they're gonna act up to get you to stop the book does that make I hope that makes sense I did now, with Remington and what worked with Remington is if he was interested in it he was right by me you know, right beside me, we were cuddled up on the couch. I miss those days. I'm hoping they return. Like and I would get some popcorn and, you know, I would just read a couple of chapters. And he would get interested. Now, if he wasn't interested in the book and I was doing all that, then he wasn't going to be interested in the book. And um, there were some books that he was real sensitive to. So I shelved those. To answer your question, that's how I handled Remington and that's how I personally feel about it. There may be a lot of different answers but since you asked me I will give you my opinion on it. All right, the next question that I had and I hope I answered really I hope I did answer that question for you. I had was where do we start with five in a row and how do we use it? Glad I had that question because I actually do have a dilemma. I'm going to do a five in a row unit. Um, we start school and I have two in mind. The two that I have in mind are many, M-I-N-I, -I, many units that um, five in a row has on their website. Remington has done so well with five in a row because he is able to relate. He's able to relate to Madeline. He's able to relate to um, uh, Storm in the Night. He's able to relate to um, the Moon Jellies, Night of the Moon Jellies. Those so stories and the things that he learned because we did a lot of child led um, really have stuck with him. Okay. So, he is, um, unfortunately, he is finding out, and it's, you know, I, I, I'm, okay, I'm just going to share this with y'all, um, because it's just us. So, he's finding out that um, there is a lot of prejudgment out there, and he is getting, um, apparently, my husband and I look like we could be Remington's parents, okay? And when people find out that we are not Remington's parents, 
um, they either leave or they're intrigued. They're, you know, I'm so glad that um, he has you. You know, we get that, we get that response. Yeah. A little bit rough on him the last, I guess, month or so. I want him to know that um, there are all different types of families. And five in a row really does help us with that. I have found five in a row to be um, very diverse. We have two stories in five in a row that I'm looking at. I'm looking at a story called Emmanuel's Dream. And this is about a, a baby boy uh, born in Africa. And he only has the use of one good leg, but he overcomes his um, social perceptions and physical challenges with great perseverance. Okay. The second one we have is the day you begin. And this one is sometimes we all feel different. How can we learn to have courage and to reach out to others even when we feel unsure or alone. When we share our stories of ourselves with others, we often end up finding out what makes us. And I can't decide. I mean, I've got books for both of them and both books are just beautiful. So I'm having a hard time deciding. Um, so the way that I approach five in a row is um, I will pick up either Emmanuel's dream, or I will pick up the day you begin, okay? And we'll read the story. And then we do some of the activities in five in a row, if he doesn't have any questions. Now, if he has questions about a character in the book or any part of the book, then that's when we do his child-led. I don't just answer the question for him. I help him look up the answer. I show him where to find the answer. And so that's kind of what leads us down these rabbit trails. Because once we find the answer to that, well then he usually finds something that he's interested so in on. until we uh, complete our five in a row study. Sometimes we're on our study for a week. The longest we have been on a study is a month. So this is where Remington and I connect because I'm helping him find the answers and I'm watching him grow as he learns, as he finds the answers. It's a beautiful thing. It's why I love it very much and it's why it's back in the classroom and it's why I have both volume two and volume three. I love talking about five in a row so if you have any other questions about five in a row let me know and um, I'll do my best to help you out. It's what we will be doing with um, either Emmanuel's dream or the day you begin. I just don't uh, know. They both have elements to the story that he is going to be able to relate to. So we start school next week so um, it may be one that I just show him the books and let him pick. Sometimes that's the best thing to do. That's how we use five in a row in our classroom. And that pretty much wraps up the questions that I had. I promised um, I would show my planner and because I'm running y'all, you know, I talked my head off of five in a row and <laughs> answering questions so y'all you know I'm running out of time I, I have enough time to show you my planner believe you me okay so let's take a look at our planner um, and how I plan for the year so first what I do is I look at his curriculum for the week and I get everything ready as far as books and stuff like first that week of school he's gonna be we're gonna be trying Charlotte's Web and we are going to be doing uh, wonderful houses around the world for history. Now we are going to be doing theology and I'll explain a little bit about how we're gonna be doing theology, but we do have theology. The rest of his uh, blue book that he has not finished yet, we just have a couple more books to finish and then we'll move on to the red book, his mental math that he's working on. 
and then he has yeah. lessons for a living education. He has the little dog. <laughs> I don't have the little dog with me. I think I left it in the living the curriculum, you know, that I get in order. And then I also, um, you know, look at the uh, five in a row storyboard, and I put that up there for him. This year, I'm doing things a little bit different. Y'all, I was so stressed whenever I had a planner and I was planning and we weren't getting things done. So I had to stop that. I had to stop that. You know, a planner here. And I have our family planner. And this shows, you know, doctor's appointments, um, Remy's speech. It shows anything that a family member has going on because we homeschool around our life. Right over here, right here, I have the subjects that we have to do per state requirements because Pop Pop is going to help out a little bit this year, right? And um, sometimes when I'm really not feeling well, my aunt comes over and she helps out. So, up here, you know, I have um, learning language arts through literature, I have math, and I have. Um, our uh, citizenship. So Texas okay. requires spelling, grammar, and reading, okay? And learning language arts through literature covers all of that and oh. also require math and they also require citizenship. Citizenship can be, you know, talking about the Texas flag. It can be talking about Texas history, U.S. history. Um, it can be talking about why we observe certain holidays. It can be why we celebrate certain holidays. Because we start school on the 8th, we are going to actually be going over September 11th. September, this will be our citizenship, and he will start learning the difference between observing a holiday and celebrating a holiday. And this would be a holiday that we observe. My loop schedule um, that I have, I have history, science, uh, five in a row, um, music, art, and then we have our morning starts, and then we have um, Remy's Choice. Our read aloud and our Bible are not going to be in the classroom this year, and I'm going to have to explain that in another video. Kind of blocked out here of what I plan on doing. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm going to do it. It just means that that's what I'm planning on when I'm looking at his career. And then what I actually do is I take my note of the day. And here it is right here. September 8th, first day of school. I take my notebook and I write down everything we did that day. And then that way I know what we need to do the next day. I know, you know, what part of the curriculum where we stopped. I know where we need to pick up. I know um, if we need to adjust anything. This is something that I want to drive home because I've been asked this too. You are not a failure when you have to adjust, okay? Your kids, they change throughout, throughout the year. We're always adjusting. We're always adjusting our schedules because our life is always kind of moving, right? I mean, it is moving. It's not kind of moving. It is moving. To um, adjust. Do not be afraid to adjust. They're your children, okay? And you know what's best. So, if language arts is not working in the morning, change it to the afternoon and put something that is going to work in the morning for um, them. You know, we're doing the loop schedule, so we have the subject, and then we have a break of some sort um, where we're still doing something in class, but it's kind of like Remy's that Choice. Is my planner, and um, that is what I do to keep my stress level down. I always felt like I was behind. I would feel like I was behind if I was finishing Remy's first grade curriculum, I'd be like, oh my gosh, he's still in first grade. Oh my gosh, you know, he's behind. He's not behind. He's teaching himself to read. He's not behind. Finishing <laughs> out the blue book because 
they are going to be teaching things that he needs to know. And we're just going to move to the Red Book, and then, you know, we're just going to go at his, at his pace. Uh, let me know if there's anything special that you do for your kids on the first day of school. But I would love to hear from uh, the parents and caregivers out there. If y'all do anything special for your children the first day of school, I would love some inspiration. Remy came uh, in my room the other day. <laughs> And he said, I was putting, you know, this curriculum all together. He said, Mimi. And I said, yeah, baby. And he said, I am so excited for school to start. <laughs> and I was like, oh, me too. Me too, baby. I cannot wait. Okay. <laughs> uh, he may have visions of sugar plums dancing in his head. And I may need to up my game. So that's why I'm kind of asking for your help. I didn't realize he was that excited to start school. So I'm, I'm excited that he's excited, but now I'm feeling like, oh my goodness, now, now I feel like my boss is telling me, I'm expecting things from you next week. <laughs> All right, well, I have talked long enough today. I do appreciate you watching, especially if you watched all the way to the end of this video. This was a long one. Uh, I do appreciate it. Again, my Instagram will be down there. My email will be down there. Feel free to comment. If you have a topic you want me to cover, if, until we meet again, be good to each other. Bye-bye.